I am Pops, and wow, I am. Um, I'm a little surprised by this film. There, okay, um, uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is so unorthodox that I was constantly questioning what I knew or remembered that the actual Pinocchio story and lore actually has in it to know how fair it is to sort of judge this film because it's just it's so radically different but more than anything it's kind of like a james and the giant peach it's like it's just it's just it's off the norm just enough to give you a dose of what you would want if of, of a reimagining so it's so good um if you are, are totally in love with Pinocchio by Disney. This is probably not the movie for you. If you remotely think the live action adaptation that came out earlier this year is good, then this is not the film for you because I, I consider that film to be absolute dog crap, man. All right. This is a lot darker and edgier. The story is so much more dynamic and interesting. This use of modern stop motion and computers, it's so good. Um, Obviously, it's Geppetto. His son has died during the Great War, World War I. Um, it is, it, he's constantly such a good father to his real son and then, of course, his surrogate son. And there's things about lies, lies finding you out, obviously, the, the, the giant nose metaphor. Uh, there's a song about the mom. And there's like this thing about the pine cones. Uh, they go to church. They pray. He's working on a crucifix. They plant the pine cone. becomes kind of a big thing <clears throat> for what Pinocchio would dreamed of doing. I mean, what Carlo dreamed of doing. And, of course, what happens because the church is the victim of an airstrike gone wrong. They blow up the church and Carlo dies. And basically, Geppetto just, you know, he was respected by his village. He, everyone admired him as a worker and a craftsman and a dad. And he's just completely crushed and devastated. None of the names are the same, right? So it's Talking Cricket, Sebastian. Uh, Uma McGregor is perfect. There's just enough comedy, but it's never derailing the story. It just kind of keeps things moving. There's um, heaviness about all of this. The Blue Wood Sprite. So it's not a blue fairy. Um, it's fine. It's off uh, kilter from what you might expect. I just love it. It's like you... Um, Sebastian is super feisty. You know what I mean? It's like, she's just giving him whatever. It's like, listen, in this world, you get what you give, right? So you get a wish. If you take care of Pinocchio for me, I'll give you a wish. And that's her deal with him. So Pinocchio, and the story kind of progresses, right? He gets locked in the closet. He sets himself on fire. They add a character here. Um, Ron Perlman voices um, kind of a police officer, a, a, a total gung-ho pro-Italian government. Mussolini alliance. Uh, his name is Podesta. He's got his own son. He's kind of the weak, thin. His name is Candlewick. And of course, Pinocchio is imitating everybody because he doesn't know what to do. And of course, then it's like he, he should go to school so he can learn discipline, goes off to school, gets derailed. It's all done just a little bit different. Um, the gags are still, like I said, the gags are fine. Um, you know, the, there's a circus and his, him performing. There's different songs, of course, and he dies. Uh, but he doesn't die. They explain. So there's the, the 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 blue wood sprite we saw. Now we get to see death. And he ends up amongst the black rabbits and death. And it's like, well, no, you don't really die. So you're going to die a whole bunch of times. And they have like an hourglass rule. So he goes back and continues his journey. And basically ends up in this conflict with... Geppetto, Pinocchio, and Podesta about all of this and kind of like, well, he's either going to have to go into the military with Podesta and risk getting, you know, harmed because Pino get Geppetto doesn't understand the life death thing for Pinocchio or you go to the circus and he goes to the circus. And this is where you have the uh, Chow Papa song, which is obviously an Oscar worthy song, definitely going to be an award nominated, probably an award winning song. It is a fantastic movie song. 
And it kind of moves along relatively to, you know, Pinocchio is going to perform for Mussolini and upset Mussolini because he's figured out that um, Volpe is, uh, you know, treating everybody badly. Um, yeah, it's just, it's all done really, really well. There's little nuances that are switched and changed up. It moves extremely quickly. Instead of the whale, it's a dogfish. Uh, the graphics look great. The pace is perfect. Um, like I said, it's just everything is just different. Everything is just if you if you remotely like James and the Giant Peach and you remember a Pinocchio story with that type of technique and completely different art style and all that, you give it a chance. I think you're really going to find something very interesting here. It's also just a story that can relate well for adults and kids. It's not like a cheeky, silly kids movie nor is it so dark or brooding that kids can't enjoy it. It's just, it's riddled with life lessons. It's riddled with depth and things like that. And it's about sacrifice and finding yourself and, and love and the purpose of life. And there's so much of this. And that at the end, when Pinocchio has to become sacrificial, it kind of prompts the depth. Like he, ha he has to give up his mortality. This, I'm sorry, he has to give up his immortality to become mortal. And Sebastian's faced with what he does with his wish, right? And then it's like, well, if he's if he's going to live longer than everyone else, what does that feel like? So there's there's even like little moments near the end of this film that are just really gut punch, good and uh, interesting. This is a film that is by far the best animated category film I have seen so far. I don't know all of the nominees. I'm going to you know the Golden Globe list is out so it kind of gives us a better focus of some of the ones that could or should be on our radar and that screen it is easily going to be nominated and will be a front runner a front runner um for best animated uh best score definitely be nominated for best score don't know that it'll win but it'll definitely be nominated in that category could win um so, or could earn some best adaptation uh screenplay uh, nominated screenplay is super tight um, really, really did a good job there. And of course that song, that best song is, is definitely one that kind of puts out there. So, uh, voices, I think the cast is great. The editing is great. I don't, I do not have any major issues with this film. I, it's, this is really, really a strong film. Like I said, the, the issue is when you look at this image and you see the design and you see the stop motion and the, and, and all that, if, if you can, if you can, get into that you're gonna love the film if you're hung up that it's not 2d animation or you have the pinocchio stuff so ingrained in your head and you can't separate it yeah i can see so anyway that's my thought on it i'd love to see if you guys have seen it what you guys think uh it's a netflix product it is um out on netflix as well i, I assume it's still in theaters it will return to theaters for its oscar run uh but it is out on netflix now so you can catch it there uh, for free. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. So anyway, thanks so much. I'm Pops.